Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation with complex numbers. So we have 1 plus i to the power x equals 16, and we're going to be solving for x values. So i is the number whose square equals negative 1. It's also known as one of the square roots of negative 1. The reason why I have one of them is because every number has two square roots in the complex world. So negative square root of negative 1 is either i or negative i. All right, that's how i is defined, but i squared equals 1 is a definitely a more compact definition of i. The imaginary unit. Okay, great. So we're going to define a complex number z as 1 plus i, and then we're going to find its absolute value, which all can also be written as the modulus, or r. And r is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is square root of 2. This is basically when you graph this complex number, this is its distance from the origin, all right? And this point is given as 1 comma 1. We have the real axis, we have the imaginary axis, that is the absolute value of z. And we do need another thing, which is the argument or the theta or the angle, okay? And this is how we find it. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Z is equal to 1 plus i, but I got the r, so I'm going to pull it out, take out i, I'm a square root of 2. Then inside I'm going to have 1 over square root of 2 plus 1 over square root of 2i. Because remember, our number was 1 plus i, I just factored it. Guess what this becomes? This becomes a complex number in polar form. This is going to be our cosine theta. This is going to be our sine theta trigonometrically. And the smallest angle that satisfies this is going to be pi over 4. So I say smallest because we can make it bigger. We'll talk about that. But first, I'm going to look at the principal branch, which is going to come from here. And then we're going to generalize it. And it's actually the answer is pretty interesting. I'm also going to be presenting, did I tell you that, uh, the second method. But the second method will be very short and brief and not general because you'll see in a little bit. Okay, let's get to work. So, since theta is pi over 4, if we write this number as a principal branch, then it's going to look like this. Z equals, by the way, how do you write a complex number in polar form? You write it as r times e to the power i theta, where theta is the angle that we talked about, and r is the modulus or the absolute value. And if you want a definition for r, so if your number z is a plus bi, then r, or absolute value of z, is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. Again, from the Pythagorean theorem, the distance formula. Make sense? I got everything I need, so why don't we put it together? So we're going to get z equals square root of 2 times e to the power i times pi over 4. And of course, we're talking about the principal branch here, because this is multi-valued, and there's going to be infinitely many values, actually, for 1 plus i in polar form. But let's just keep it simple for now. Now, how do you write this in general, right? That's what matters. So in general, we can write z as square root of 2 times e to the power i. So all you have to do is just add multiples of 2 pi, 2 pi over 4, and you're good to go. So I'm just going to add 2 and pi, which also means even multiples of phi or phi, <laughs> come on even multiples of pi, which is the same thing as 2n pi, okay? So that's my number in general. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Now we have 1 plus i to the power x equals 16. And then I'm going to replace my 1 plus i with this gigantic ginormous expression. By the way, ginormous is not a real word, but they just made it a word, so hopefully that'll be in the dictionaries pretty soon. So let's go ahead and uh, replace z with that root 2 times e to the power i times pi over 4 plus 2 n pi. Isn't that fun? You get something uh, exponential. <laughs> okay, let's raise it to the power x and set it equal to 16. And of course, 16 is, uh, we're also going to write it as a complex number. Let's just write it as 16 times 1, but 1 is just 1 plus 0 i. So one is right here on the real axis, no imaginary part, and its angle is just going to be zero degrees. But 
instead of zero, we just write multiples of two pi. So we just write it as two k pi. I want to use a different variable. I mean, a different integer k, uh, by the way, n and k are integers, because uh, they don't have to be dependent. Make sense? Because they take multiple values and they can take different values. Okay, cool. But we're going to make them agree at some point. That's what's beautiful about the end of the first method and the beginning of second. Okay? So let's go ahead and do the following. We're going to put it together. And guess what? We're going to ln both sides. So let's natural log both sides. ln and ln. And then this is going to give us the following. x is going to come to the front. x times ln root 2 times e to the power i pi over 4 plus 2n pi. And then x brought down. So, And we can kind of separate these into two pieces. Oops. OK. And obviously, this is going to bring to the fr front and ln is 1. And the same thing is going to happen here. We're going to split it up into ln square root of 2 plus ln this. But notice that it's just i times this. So let's not write an extra step here being lazy. Yeah, sometimes you can be lazy, right? And i times 2k pi. Awesome. Great. So we're almost there. Uh, x is going to be what? ln 16 plus i times 2k pi divided by ln root 2. And by the way, I can write it as um, 1 half. Anyways, let's do it later. And then we're going to get this. And this should be the value of x, but I'm going to simplify a little bit because I want to show you something real cool. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and write this as ln2 to the fourth or 4 ln2. And then this is it's going to be like this. And then ln root 2 can be written as 1 half of ln2 because 2 to the power 1 half is that. i times, and we can make a common denominator here, but uh, we can also leave it like that. I don't know. And next I want to do the following. I want to get rid of the... Uh, 4 at the bottom. So let's just go ahead and multiply everything by 4. The top and the bottom. We're going to multiply by 4. We're going to multiply by 4. You can multiply in dire any direction you want, okay? So this is going to give me 16 ln 2 plus i times 8k pi divided by 4 and 1 half can cancel out, 2 ln 2 plus. And now that 4 is going to be distributed here and here, that's going to give us the following. Uh, 4 times pi over 4 is going to be pi, and this is going to be 8 and pi. So I can kind of write it as 8 and plus 1 pi. Okay? Let me write it that way. And now we got our result. Awesome. Beautiful, right? That's the general solution. But guess what? If you take k equals 9 and n equals 1, what do you get? Let's check it out. x equals 16 ln 2 plus i times, and if k is equal to 9, you're going to get 72 pi from here. And the bottom is going to give you 2 ln 2 plus. If n is 1, you're going to get i times 9 pi. Notice that you can factor out a 8, right? x is going to be 8 times 2 ln 2 plus. You could take out larger numbers, but there's a point. Uh, there's a reason why we take that out, because things are going to cancel out like crazy. And notice that these are going to cancel out, and we're going to end up with x equals 8 as a particular value. In general, let me tell you that, if you just pick a k equals 8 and plus 1, the same thing is going to happen. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method real quick, because this brings us to the second approach. And of course, this is limited, like I said earlier, but it's still cool. So, we got x equals 8 as a specific or particular solution by setting these values or these kinds of values, but that's a lot, right? Let's go ahead and find out in a different way. I'm going to square this expression. That's 2i. So I'm going to raise it to the fourth power, which means square both sides. And that's going to be 4i squared, which means negative 4. Let's go ahead and raise this guy to the eighth power, which indicates I have to raise this to the second power because we're squaring both sides. And that's going to give us 16. Uh-oh, we got the answer by trial and error. Awesome. So x equals 8 works. Makes sense? Because we were looking for this, remember? And what do you think? Uh, how do you think I came up with this problem? This is what I used. 
x equals 8 is a solution, but that's only one of the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.